some time I've wanted to make a hydroponic system and since I love 3D printing I wanted to make it 3D printable. What is hydroponics you ask? It is a way of growing plants not in soil but in water with added nutrients. The easiest way is to simply submerge the roots of your plants in nutrient solution, for example on some kind of raft. But most plants will not like having their roots submerged continuously. You could add an air pump that adds more oxygen to the water and this can help. Another solution is to place the plant's roots in a continuous or intermittent flow of water. A pump transports the nutrient solution upwards and it then flows along the roots of the plants back down into the water reservoir. My solution works by flooding a planter with nutrient solution and then slowly draining it again. A pump moves the water up and gravity makes sure it drains again, through tiny holes in the bottom of the planter. The planter is filled with a growing medium such as stones to keep the plants in place. The growing medium shouldn't absorb too much water, as we want most of it to drain regularly so that the plant roots get some air. So I go ahead and design this for a small submersible pump that I have lying around. I start 3D printing with a water reservoir, which I also coat with resin, because I don't think it would otherwise hold several liters of water without leaking. Mm. Then I 3D print the planter that goes on top and I realize that I'm running out of white filament, so I go for a mid-print filament change, which actually looks pretty cool. And here I am testing the assembly for the first time. Pretty underwhelming. I manage to increase the flow a little and the kitten decides that this is actually a drinking fountain rather than a planter. Well, at least the water is running nicely now. And I realize my first design mistake. Half of the water flows down on the outside of the planter rather than going in. So I add a cover on top and that makes things better. Second design flaw coming up. The bottom of the planter won't fit inside, because I made the ditch at the top too large and thus the planter opening too small. So for testing, I cut the bottom in half and now it fits. But the planter won't fill up with water, it's draining too quickly. Time for some duct tape to fill some of the gaps. Now it fills up nicely, just as planned. I decide to redesign the planter, as it is still leaking some water to the outside. This time I make the wall straight, remove all of the weird holes in the ditch and rather make a nozzle that dumps the water directly into the planter from above. I even remember to add a gap for the cable of the pump. I don't bother coating the planter with resin. Due to the gaps in the bottom plate, all the water would drain too quickly anyway, so I instead line it with plastic film and I use a trash bag for that purpose. Here I realize that I've made one of the sides of the plastic film too long, but I don't care and I decide to cover it up with duct tape.
That's it. Moment of Truth. Beautiful. Look at that nice flow. It also fills up pretty quickly. Time to poke some holes in the bottom so it can drain again. Of course, I make too many holes and it drains too quickly. Duct tape to the rescue. The kittens are a great help by the way. Now it looks good, put in some growing medium. One more test. It takes about 50 seconds to fill the planter and after some more experimenting, I decide to fill it up every 10 minutes. And add some plants. To activate the pump, the pump's power cable is plugged into a smart power plug that is connected to my home automation system. But of course you could use a simple timer power plug. I also decide to add a sensor that detects when the planter is filled with water to shut down the pump in the exact right moment. To be sure, I still limit the time that the pump is allowed to be active. Everything is programmed in Node-RAD within Home Assistant, but that is a topic for another video. If you like this design, you can download it from Thingiverse by following the link in the description. It also includes the Fusion 360 project file, so you can easily make adjustments. If you do use the project and maybe make some improvements, I would love to hear about it or maybe see some pictures.